no driving gloves. We're a combination of gearheads. John, the instigator. Derek, the conservator. Will, the builder. Sean, the racer. And maybe a guest. Invite you to listen while they sit down, have a drink, and discuss cars. More and subscribe to the podcast with no driving gloves. Time now. Hey, it's a uh, kind of a special, we're just throwing one together tonight. I bought a whole bunch of new equipment for the studio. Uh, I got something that's irritating me throughout to the guys this afternoon. Hey, who's ever available? Let's uh, let's get together and talk. Uh, we got Will tonight. Eating um, dinner. For you, the, the video of this does make it out. We're, yeah, we're, we're trying a new recording platform. I've got a new mixer. If anybody wants a Zoom L12, Live Track 12. I've got one for sale at a pretty good price. Figure about 20, 30% off of retail. That's what we've been recording the podcast on. Sorry, John. I'm just oh. stepping all over you. Oh, that's okay. That's what edit- editing's for. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go ahead and apologize for some of the background noise. I'm uh, in my living room. My four dogs are running around. My daughter is. Right here doing TikTok video something with Gatorade and uh, candy. I, I don't know. So I'm just going to go ahead and apologize for that. That's okay. I'm sitting here with a libation and my Blue Diamond dark chocolate almonds. That uh, Blue Diamond, if you'd like to sponsor the podcast, I ordered these off of Amazon. They were on sale this week, like nine bucks for the bag. <laughs> so. I'm eating but, dinner as well. One of the reasons, in addition to the new uh, equipment testing and trying to get this, there's a lot of things we're going to be able to live stream here. We're actually live streaming to a hidden Facebook page that I own just to test this one out. Uh, be able to take calls. We'll be able to take comments, and you know, we'll be uh, hopefully we'll be a real podcast within by the end of February. Um, got a couple of big interviews coming up, so we're probably not going to get too risky on the technology on those, but by the end of February, we'll hopefully be rolling. You'll be able to comment, participate. Um, if you are an iPhone user, we're looking at the ability to um, participate with clubhouse too. So if you can uh, get an invite to clubhouse, but then the, Main thing is, I'm irritated, and I thought the car community was much more responsible than what they are. Yeah, we're all rebellious, um, some bitches, as what would Sarah Buford D. Justice would once say, but I thought we had a brain in our heads. And if I look at my computer screen and my calendar, right, and get Will to participate here, um, haven't some major shows been canceled so far this year, Will? Um, oh yeah. I caught Will with his mouth full of food. Sorry. <laughs> My yeah. wife was standing in front of me trying to tell me something too. Um, but, uh, yeah, Grand National Roadster <laughs> Show is generally into January, 1st of February. Well, generally it's ended end of February 1st, end of January, 1st of February. And I had already postponed it to March, middle of March. And I think it was last week, beginning of the week, they just went ahead and canned it till next year. So, I mean. Yeah, I saw Scotty, I saw that news on Scotty DTV's uh, Facebook page and that. But Crazy thing about it, we were actually going to be debuting a car there. So, you know, what do you do now? And, and I saw your kind of comments or Scotty's comments or something on that post that you know, there are rules with the Grand National Roadster show about displaying that car. And I don't know if yeah. that gives you an extra 12 months of build time and gives him 12 months to pay off, pay it off. Or <laughs> if that, um, in, in, in our, or if uh, we do something else. In our current situation, we got a lot of stuff stacking up. You know, we got builds waiting in the storage building. You know, I can't, I mean, don't get me wrong. I could work on the car for another year. I mean, it's pretty easy to do. But just for the, keeping the workflow, keeping it going right at Big O, the customer's wallet, you know, just everything across the board. I still got to make my interior date with this car and still get it done. Um, You know, the interior guy will have a little more time and we'll have a little more time to really kind of dial it in and, and get it ready to go and, 
it's it's probably honestly just going to wind up being a SEMA debut. Uh, this is a, it's what's the Impala that we had uh, at Grand National in bare metal last year. So, you know, the 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 goal was to debut the car at SEMA when we first started it. So, you know, it's kind of funny. You know, they canceled SEMA. We're like, okay, we'll go to Grand National. They canceled Grand National. Okay, we're now we're going back to SEMA. So, I mean. At the end of the day, it's it's all going to work out. But th- that's that's one show that's been canceled. World of Wheels and Chattanooga got canceled this year, and I'm just watching event after event after event being canceled. And maybe this is too local. I mean, even the, like the Cars and Coffee cruise in in Los Angeles. Most of the podcasts I listen to in Los Angeles, those guys are saying, "Hey, we need to cool it for a couple of weeks and just kind of quit going." Or really take precautions when we go there. Here we are in Alabama, better than everybody else. And my Facebook feed is full of car people. And all of them are talking about February 12th through 14th, O'Reilly's World of Wheels. And it's happening. People are talking about their cars they're entering. People are getting their cars detailed. People are, I mean, they're talking about the special celebrities that are showing up. And don't get me wrong, I like world of wheels for what it is i like the family that runs it i'm actually sitting on a board with one of the the guys that run it uh for another car show later in the year for fall december but i cannot believe they're thinking that uh, we're recording on the 22nd january that they think in three weeks you can have a huge car show indoors in the situation we are. Yeah, people, some more people will be vaccinated, etc. But I just find it irresponsible. Um, Will, you've been there before. Uh, and I don't know if you want to get, this kind of gets a little political and I, I, don't, I don't have a you know, hat in the ring anymore. But would you, if you had a car to go there, would you go and display it and, you know, say, put your employees there with it if you couldn't no. do that? I personally, yeah, I, w- I would take my car. I would come in on setup day. Luckily for me, I know the guys that put that show on as well. You know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. I would go early. Uh, I would go on Wednesday night or whatever and set my car up and either get there real early in the morning and clean it up and go home or come really late at night and dust it off. But I personally wouldn't be hanging out there. I have... Um, A mom that has some, um, you know, has had some health problems in the past. And, and, you know, I've got a shop full of 10 employees that I can't risk getting sick and being shut down for two weeks. So I see exactly where you're coming from with it. And it, it doesn't make a, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now, you know, is there state, Is there state requirements? You know, everybody's got to wear a mask. Are they only going to let half capacity in? Because let me tell you, Friday, Friday and Saturday nights at the Birmingham World of Wheels, it's 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 assholes and elbows. You know, I'm here in Birmingham, and Birmingham is a town of you know masks are mandated. And when I went to the doctor's the other day, the mask I wear has ventilation holes in it, which in the city of Birmingham are actually banned. Um, the surrounding areas aren't, but again, I'm, I'm kind of protecting myself. And if you had a mask on, it wouldn't be so bad that I have the ventilation hole. So so, yes, I'm kind of an asshole in this situation too. When I went into the, see the doctor, they stopped me at the hospital and they made me change masks and they gave me a different mask. As a matter of fact, it's hanging up here on the studio doorknob, uh, that didn't have ventilation holes and I had no problem with it. But this is a town that's full of people that are just mask fatigued. A lot of people know that I do the cigar shop thing and I hang out, you know, actually do part time work in a cigar shop. And while masks are mandated in Alabama, the shop owners aren't mask police and I'm not a mask policeman there. And I'm probably the the biggest guy in the company that is serious about wearing a mask, because like you said, I don't want to risk getting sick myself and then bringing it home to my family. You know, there's a protocol that. I go through certain clothes I wear when I come home, it's straight, you know, to the bathroom, change clothes, shower, 
clean up best I can. You know, it's stuff my dad went over with me because back in the 70s, he, you know, he worked tuberculosis wings in the hospital and never got infected. And it's the same type of stuff. But I just can't believe that you would even plan a show to this extent. I understand like what Geneva did last year and what a lot of events did last year where they waited until a week before the event to cancel the event because that's what the event insurance required or 48 hours before the event. But this group's still promoting the event and adding people and taking registrations. And I can't believe that they're doing that thinking, well, we're just going to get the event insurance and when we cancel it on Tuesday or whatever, uh, the week of the World of Wheels. I just, I can't, you know, I just can't fathom that people are going to take cars there. And, Will, I guess I would even have a problem with you because you take a car there. I want to go there and see a big oak hill. <laughs> you know, right. things, you, you know you're, you're becoming legendary <laughs> in what, the, the, the TV show and things like that. Let's go, you know, let's go see. I mean... The last place I saw, um, what do I want to say? Marianne from Gilligan's Island right. was at the World of Wheels. <laughs> so, and she's never going to be I mean, I, I totally... <laughs> but I just have... A, I, I totally see both sides of it. Um, I mean, I've got friends of mine that are, that are actually uh, older than... A good bit older than me. You know, my father's age, a little bit older than my father. And, you know, they're big car people and they're not slowing down. You know, um, Tommy told me the other day, he goes, Will, you know, I'm going to die of something one day. It's not like I'm in the best health. Something could happen to me tomorrow. He goes, I'm rolling just like, um, just like I did. He said, I'm not letting it slow me down. I still got things I want to do. I'm not going to be cooped up in the house and, I'm going to go do what I want to do when I want to do it. And, you know, don't get me wrong. He's not running around trying to spread coronavirus. I mean, he does wear his mask and sanitizes his hands and stuff like that. But he's not going to be a recluse and stay stay in his house and just, you know, be a, be a hermit. So... I understand that. I mean, I'm not a hermit. I don't live here in my studio. And, you know, I go out and do some part-time stuff and... I know, I'm not going to restaurants other than to pick up food to bring it home, going to the gas station to pick up drinks or gas and coming home. You know, I'm not going to Best Buy and wandering around. I'm not going to the mall and wandering around. But, you know, I'm taking some precautions and things like that. I'm somebody, I, I totally agree with that. I'm going to die of something someday. I'm amazed I'm sitting here at 49 years old and I'm still alive. If you would have, you know, I guarantee you, you could probably, if there's recordings, you could go back to when I was 18 or 19 and I knew I'd be dead by 40. I'm type one diabetic. Um, people joke with me that I should start a band. I have the greatest band name, world's worst diabetic. And I'm sorry, family, if you do hear this. Yeah. I, you know, I don't necessarily take as good a care of myself as I should. I mean, I've got state of the art insulin pumps and, you know, all of that stuff. But if I want to have a snicker bar, I'm going to have a damn snicker bar. If, you know, I can't drink sugared sodas anymore, but if I want to have, you know, a libation, I'm going to have a, you know, an alcoholic libation. If I'm going to want to sit down and get drunk with a bunch of guys over beer, I'm going to do it. But, and that's going to kill me and it's going to end my life sooner. And I'm well aware of it, but it's not going to end somebody else's life. And that's my biggest thing with Corona. I don't technically care if I get Corona. I'm willing to take the risk. I'm just not willing to... You know, I live in a house that there's four people here and everybody has some sort of disease or there's some some sort of immune compromise. And technically, I'm the worst being a type one diabetic and I'm the one who's actually most active. I'm not going to risk coming home and, you know, contracting it yesterday and exposing, you know, my girlfriend to it today. And then she's going to she's out of town now visiting her her mom and exposing her, you know, her elderly mother to it, who would then expose it to her elderly grandparents. And that's where I have the problem is, yeah, I, I can say to hell with my life, I'm going to die. It's the trickle down effect. And, you know, I'm going to feel bad if I live that's, and I kill off everybody that's else. That's my in the biggest household. deal with it, too. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> I, I couldn't live with myself if. 
you know, just being stupid and, and coming down with it and giving it to my parents and then giving it to the guys at the shop and then all of their parents and going to the TV set with it and getting all of those guys. So the crazy thing about it, though, I, I have been around people that, yeah, it, you know, have had it while they've had it. Rode in a car with, with one of them for two hours. <clears throat> Didn't get it, so... I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I got immunity to it. Yeah, and it's it's interesting because I got you know I had direct exposure early on in in early March before you know really before any of the lockdown stuff occurred in that um, and the real panic. I was exposed to it early March with um, somebody, and he had got it from somebody. He he rode in a car with somebody for about eight hours one day, and then he started feeling bad. But I worked with him for another week and a half. And we spent time in my office. I spent time in his office. And, you know, we weren't wearing masks or anything at that point in time. And, you know, I didn't come down with anything. I was extremely concerned, you know, about it. Um, I didn't really like the way it was handled because I found out he had it through a trickle down. I wasn't even called because they said, you don't want to tell a lot of people you have it. Because in the early days of coronavirus, it was like in like having right. the plague or something, which I guess technically it is. And you didn't want you didn't want to find out because we you know I knew people who lost big contract jobs. You know they they had construction jobs or they had jobs doing electronic installations or home theaters, and people found out they had had corona, and the due to the fact they had it not and they recovered they weren't allowed in people's houses. Now we've kind of under, you know, I think that that stigma has went away, but it's, you know, it's taken more and more people and where we're at now with, I guess, numbers on the rise. I saw something out of Illinois today where they're actually coming down, but maybe that's because we've been a little bit strict. Well, I'll be honest um, with you, John. I, I'm just, just, just let it go. You know, let them put on the world wheels. If you feel comfortable going, go. If you don't feel comfortable going, stay your butt at home. You know, that that's where I wish we were. I wish we were to a point to where it was just go back to what was normal, although that will probably never happen. Um, go back to it. And, I mean, and I understand the whole side of the hospitals being, you know, full and all that stuff. Well, Hospitals want to be full. They want to be at 99, 100% capacity. That's when they're making money. And, I mean, I, I, I understand both sides of it. I really do. But I'm just ready to see the point to where it's just like, you know, let's go to a car show. You know, if I got to wear a mask, I'd probably wear one anyway if it was indoors. Outdoors, I'm not going to. Um, I'll just stay away from people that I don't know. And I don't know. I'm I'm tired of it. <laughs> I, I'm 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 so over it. Um, luckily for me, um, I've got a nice home. I've got a nice shop. I've got places to go that keep me entertained. That I don't really have to go anywhere. I can stay right here on our eighty acres. I can go fishing. I can go hunting. I can go to the shop. You know. I can do whatever I want to do pretty much when I want to do it. I got a go-kart track across the street, you know. So <clears throat> luckily for me in my situation, it really hadn't been that bad other than just not being able to um, go to car shows and see my friend and my extended family. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I'm much like you. I mean, I have plenty to keep me entertained and, and enjoy things. I'm just of that that group and uh, this is probably the most controversial show no driving gloves has ever done and maybe we'll get some feedback on it but i'm of the thinking that maybe we'd be at that maybe we'd be having the grand national roadster show maybe i wouldn't be talking about oh what are we thinking about with world of wheels if we would have taken it a little bit more seriously in the fall i'm not saying masks are going to prevent it and it's you know you wear a mask and you know you're totally immune from it but you know now we're getting the um the vaccine, but we're getting the vaccine and it's getting administered. And I just think we would have been on, we wouldn't, the vaccine was going to come the day it came, no matter what. 
we would be on a little bit better downward trajectory if we would have taken a little bit more seriously. But now that people are so fatigued and not taking it seriously, I just see us prolonging it. And instead of being able to return to normalcy, which I agree with you, Will, that and on the tech side, we're, we're never going to return to 2019. Um, we are, and who, who was I talking to about it? We are definitely on the road to idiocracy. We haven't seen the movie. Uh, we're talking about that on the show a, a couple shows ago and we talked about a viewing party. But we're going, we're on the road to that now with, you know, streaming and, you know, this new technology I'm using, the number of, you know, technically video conferencing podcast platforms that are available that have developed because of the pandemic, the office buildings and the leases that have been canceled and the companies that have moved. We're never going to return to that, but we'd be able to return to some level of normalcy by now if we would have taken it a lot more seriously before. You know, we don't talk politics on here, but, you know, there's rumors about a potential nationwide shutdown. And I doubt if that'd be on the table if we would have taken it more seriously. And I'm not going to get into the yay or nay of that one. Uh, those of you who know me know where I'd probably sit on that. Um, but that's getting too <laughs> far political. But I just want to talk, to, you know, say to people, if you're going to go to World of Wheels or you're going to go to your Saturday morning cruise in, oh, do a little bit of a half a brain and think it out. Be sure to wear a mask. Don't be the rebel that I'm going to go to World of Wheels without a mask and let them throw me out and I'm going to throw a fit because it's, you know, just, you know, do it. Be respectful of everybody else. I'll tell you. I'll tell you something that may happen. All right, because it happened to good guys in Texas. All right, they had the show. Everybody showed up. They couldn't control the mask wearing and everything else. Hell, they shut the show down. Not good guys. I don't know if it was Texas Motor Speedway or the state of Texas or Dallas Fort Worth. I, I don't know how it got shut down or who shut it down. Um, but they shut it down right in the middle of the show. So, you know, if they open the show up on Friday, it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, they open it up on Friday and they can't control the crowd and the mask wearing and the mandates, the state will come in there and they'll, just, they'll pull the plug on it right then. Like John was saying, follow the mandates. If you want to enjoy the show and the possibilities of it happening, you have to you have to follow the mandates. I know people are are hell bent on the government not controlling you, and I'm 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 there with you to an extent. But if you enjoy doing this type of thing and you want to continue doing this type of thing then it's best to follow the state regulations and the mandates of the city and and what they're requiring and asking you to do at the show. Very well said, Will. Um, probably better than I could have said it. You know, mandates aren't the law, but they're heavily advised. And I've been exposed because of the hospitality industry I kind of am affiliated with, with the cigar shop and the lounges and things. I hear trickle down of the health department in Birmingham going into facilities. And I don't know if they're sending inspectors out or if it's somebody calls and complains and then they send somebody out to check, but they have been sending out letters now telling restaurants and bars and stuff that if you don't control it, we're going to eliminate dine in eating in your establishment. We're going to eliminate, you know, patrons of your establishment, um, other than maybe walk in, walk out customers, you aren't going to allow to be allowed to have people because you're not playing by the rules. All you're doing then is hurting that small business that you're there trying to support. So let's just play, you know, do what you want. I, you know, I know people are going to go to World of Wheels and my little podcast isn't going to keep you off of it. I won't be seeing you there. Um, but I think I made that decision last year. I spent too much time at World of Wheels last year. You know, we brought a helicopter to it last year. <laughs> but we'll, uh, you know, just, I guess I'm asking you, please use half a brain when it comes to World of Wheels. Or if it, you know, go to any of the, the other shows that are going on. And like I said, especially the Saturday morning cruise-ins and stuff. I haven't been to one in a, we're pushing a year now. Um, it's probably been since last February that it's been, I've been to one like that. 
And a lot of it is because they don't wear masks or they don't take any precautions there. They don't believe in social distancing. And, you know, you step, somebody steps up onto you and you take three steps back and then they take three steps closer to you. And next thing you know, you're four blocks down the road trying to keep your six foot distance. Just use half a brain, masks, sanitizers, and, and, and don't be the rebel. Let's try to get back to some sort of normalcy so that, you know, Will can be showing cars in June and we can be going to autocrosses and races and, you know, everything else, you know. Bernie Sanders seems yeah. to be getting around yeah. today. So. He's, he's, he has made the rounds. He's been watching Facebook and social media. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know, um, Heck, I, I even got on board with it, posted a couple, and. You know, um, uh, first Friday in they they had it I can't remember what month it was last year um, they had it and it was one of the things they they put it out on all social media platforms hey we're having first Friday if people follow the rules and do what they're asked to do we will continue to have first Friday if you don't we won't so I elected not to go uh, my dad went down there you know he's 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 got his mask on. He's he's staying away, and half the people down there wasn't wearing masks. They were all huddled up in a group and everything else. So you know, we didn't get to enjoy First Friday for the rest of the year. I mean, so I mean, there's another there's a perfect example of just just follow the mandates right now. You know, it, it it'll eventually go away. Um, but right now, if you want to get out and enjoy your hot rod and enjoy your friends, unfortunately, that's what you got to do. If not, stay your butt at home and don't ruin it for everybody else. I guess I'm sitting here thinking, and it's probably too far to go. You know, masks are right now just an additional piece of clothing. I don't see anybody really bitching in a big way about, I have to wear pants in public. <laughs> and it's the same thing. They're just pants for your head. You know, now, if anybody wants to walk around topless and, you know, brawless and whatever, I can live with that. Right. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm probably Please still going to wear your pants. But just think of it as that. It's another piece of clothes that they're asking you to wear. <laughs> asking you to wear. But with that, unless we've got something else, and I'm sure we've pissed off enough people that uh, everybody's left us for tonight. <laughs> um, um, you got anything else to chat about, Will, or... No, I'm good. I um, think I need to buy a new microphone. I still sound a little fuzzy here. Yeah, there's been a, there's been kind of a weird delay. But okay, I'm gonna hit the outro, and we will be chatting with you. I guess you know in a few days, whenever yeah, the producer here gets around to <laughs> releasing and editing podcasts, we're gone. Thank you for listening, and remember to look us up at nodrivinggloves.com. There you can find back episodes, links to products we recommend, and links to all of our social media. Be sure to tell a friend about us. No Driving Gloves is edited and produced by J. Lewis Productions.